welcome guys to vlog number one I'm here on my new water going in for the spring and summer I've had a good walk around uh, the water is up quite a lot it's really high it's over the far banks um, but we have seen two uh, groups of fish one at the top end of the lake and one just in front of where I am now so they're moving around which is good uh, got everything all set up now so it's just a case of getting the rods out clipped them all up, got them where I want them to go, so fingers crossed they go out on no dramas. I'm going to go for a little wander first, put some bait in, see if I can find them again. But uh, yeah, I also wanted to show you how boggy it was down here as well and how how far the water was up. There we go guys, I'm over there and I'm just going to have a walk between the two lakes. I'm going to try and put some bait in and see if I can find these fish. <clears throat> but yeah, you've got the, the little lake here to the right and obviously you've got the bigger lake to the left but it looks like at some point it's burst its banks because the water's right up as you can see so I'm gonna I've got my waders on so I'm gonna have a walk up here and see what I can see but don't want to go dropping my phone in the water so I'll uh, walk through and then check back in so uh, when we come for a little walk first of all um, where those Canadian geese are, that's where all the carp were held up. Well, I'll say all of them, we've seen about nine or ten of them. So I'm going to have a quiet walk down through the water and hopefully see something. Well, they're not, they don't appear to be here. Not that I can see. Looks like they've already moved off. They were where I'm stood now. They're obviously coming up through there. They're feeding on all this down here. And then over where those two ducks are, they were there as well. But yeah, they've moved off. Casting tutorial, isn't it, eh? <laughs> oh, 
fairly tight line as well for the screen. Ten past eight. Nothing to report yet. Um, my brother's had a run on the dead bait. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get it in. Uh, he's just gone up the top now before the light completely goes to see if he can stalk one of those carp out which are up there on the path. Cousin Steve and Stuart also went for a walk around earlier on while I was sorting some bits and pieces out and trying to recover from a headache. And uh, they've seen some fish up there on the shallows again, hence why Stuart's gone back up there. But yeah, so I've had a little bit of blow over my spot, whether that's tench, I don't know. And that's just in the margin on the left hand side. It's all quiet. The wind's direction's changing constantly. One minute it's blowing in here, next minute it's blowing over to the corner. Can't really make up his mind. But yeah, I think I'm going to leave them out now. They're out, so I'm going to leave them out for tonight. And uh, have another look at it tomorrow when I wake up, I reckon, and see what I might do then. Half, I was half tempted to keep both rods in the margins, one to the left and one to the right after the, that shoal fish went move through earlier on. But after all the commotion of me going in the water, backwards and forth, backwards and forth, if they were anywhere in the air, I'd probably spook them off. So um, I want to keep one out really far and then one in just in case. Morning two, and uh, what you see in front of you, as explained yesterday, is the path and green where you can normally get up and bivy. Um, probably about 20 yards up in front where the uh, you can see the gravel is a light colour. There's carp up there swimming around. They've just spooked out the area. <coughs> well, I say spooked, they've just swam out. They haven't jetted off. But uh, I'm gonna try and do a little uh, spooky one and lower a bait in. Not sure if you can see it hanging off there. Got a little bag, some free offerings and a boilie in. And they're gonna creep up there and lower this slowly in and see if I can uh, get one out. Anyway guys, gotta be really quiet, really, really careful as otherwise I will ruin my chances. I'll uh, put this back on in two moments. Come in, and then they went straight back up. They know it's there. Just had six come in, six big mirrors. Right over the top of it. One went down and took some of the way off me. And they slowly cautiously went back out. Seen the first common come in and the little Olympic single. But uh, the majority of them seem to be mirrors. Well, guys, I was stood there for just over half an hour, um, and the biggest amount, of, well, sorry, the most amount of fish that I've seen was about eight all in a row. Now, just over at the far corner there on the right, um, well. I reckon it was a 20 coming easy. Really broad shoulders on it, massive mirror. Um, but they've seemed to push down the bottom end now, so I'm not sure if they figured out that I'm here. Uh, but they haven't come up on that little shelf now for about 10 minutes. A couple of them did get, get the red down and have a, a quick go on the free offerings, um, but they didn't stay there and feed. They just picked a couple up and moved off. So uh, I'm gonna turn the camera off now. Uh, I'm gonna keep going though for another half hour and see what happens. So I uh, just come round to my brother's swim and he's showing me how to fish. <laughs> what you got then Stu? A lamprey. Yeah? What have you caught it on? Lamprey mate. Lamprey, yeah? Oh he is nice isn't he? Do you want me to help you with the netting? Yeah, done yet. No? Just take your time mate. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, you've, you've doing a vlog? Yeah. Okay, well um, I've gone up at 10, 10am 10 this morning and Sid, the pike on the rod, <laughs> was sat just in front of me. So I use the hook bait that had been on overnight, put it in, and took it. So I give him a whole lamprey. 
He took that as well. He's lovely, Stu. I can see him in the water just down there. So I put a third bait hook bait on, and he took about 10 minutes just to nuzzle it, look at it. And he's just taken it about two feet in front of me, just there in the water. Brilliant. Well then, Stu, that's a lovely pike you've got there. Do you yeah. want to just talk through how you've caught it this morning? Well, I've, uh, I've noticed this little thing been swimming around in my swim. So I've given him some free offerings, some lamprey dead bait, and my secret ingredient, which is um, mackerel fillets in a feeder. And it seems to send the pike wild. And this one has been hanging around me like a bad smell all morning. Yeah. Given him plenty of free offerings, and he took one whole lamprey to himself. Okay. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it just had a quick, quick struggle, quick bite, a bit of a fight with him, and uh, succumbed. So, what weight was he, Stu, prior to us doing the zero in on the scales? According to the scales, 18 pounds 14 ounces, but we do have to uh, zero off the weight of the net first. So. Yeah, so we'll do that in two moments, then we we'll give you the accurate weight on it. Yeah, it's uh, as close as I've been to my PV in a very, very long time. Right, just move your left arm out, Stu, and just show us a bit of the tail, if you can. And then we can slip him back. Yeah. And Good sized pike, I'm really, really happy to have caught this fish. And you've, really uh, happy. And your first session as well? Yeah, on this water, I, this just means I'll be back. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's away. Thank you very much. He's just down there in the margin, look. Sold him. So what was the weight, Stu, in the end? 15-1. 15-1. Yeah, it went 18, 14 in the net. Yeah. And the weight of the net was three pounds thirteen. Brilliant. So that's the result. One, two, fifteen-one. Just sulking down there in the margin. Give him ten minutes to recover. He'll be fine. <coughs> Gave him a bit of car car carp care as such, or pike care, and managed to get a treble out. So he'll be on his way. Yeah, and he'll be we've been possible. able to uh, remove a, a trace that was previously snapped inside the poor thing's tummy. Yeah. And we've got the majority of it out. I don't think we've got all of it. But um, like I said earlier, I've been feeding him uh, free, free food all morning. So he's not bothered by eating. It's not hindered him eating. No. Which is a good thing. Okay. Well done, Stu. So on to the next one. Yeah. Try and get a cart this time. Here you go, Stuart. Number two for the day. Talk us through it. Uh, uh, same as before. Same as said earlier. Um, <laughs> patrolling sick. pike. So I fed it a lamprey. Took it without any doubt at all. So I put one on the hook bait, and uh, this is pike number two of the morning and of the session. So you've had a right result this weekend, HG? As a predator basher, this is as good as it gets. Okay. Well, well, well in, mate. Well done, Stu. Brilliant. Right, let's put her back. All right, just confirm the weight of that second pike, then, Stu. Uh, 11 pounds, 7 ounces. Okay. Yeah, very happy. So up guys, you have to uh, ignore the uh, engine going behind my bivvy. Unfortunately, my power pack's gone dead. <laughs> Thought I charged it before I come, obviously not. But um, yeah, I've got Stuart's phone on charge in there. He's, a cr he's had a cracking couple of days. He's uh, had two pike out, as you've seen in the footage. Uh, but me, still struggling at the moment. I've had a couple of bleeps, but nothing else. Um, went back around to try and see, find those carp up in the shallows as well. Uh, but they've disappeared. Might have disturbed them up there. We've got another night ahead of us. So fingers crossed, we'll get lucky. Um, if not, it's not going to put me off though. I've seen enough carp here over the last two days to uh, really want to get back up here again as soon as possible. So we're at the end of our uh, two night session on our new water. Uh, Stuart's had a cracking couple of days. Me on the other end, not so good. Um, as like I said, we've seen the fish, so it's encouraging to see. Yeah. But uh, starting to pee down rain now, so we're going to get ourselves off home, get ourselves all cleaned up. Anyway, guys, until next time, later. Tight lines. <laughs>